Now that you've learned about the different concentration units we use with solutions, we can go over some suggestions for helping you work with concentration units in various word problems. When working with concentration units, it's often helpful to begin by identify the units that are given and the units that are needed. You can begin by writing the concentrations with their units. When doing this, you should pay attention to whether the units correspond to the solvent, the solute, or the solution. So in other words, if a problem gave you 4.28 molal solution, you could write this as 4.28 moles of solute over 1 kilogram of solvent. In the same way, if a word problem gave you 3.24 molar solution, you could write this as 3.24 moles of solute over 1 liter of solution. If the problem gave you 2.71 mass percent solution, you could write this as 2.71 grams of solute divided by 100 grams of the solution. Now that you know to write out concentrations with their units, including whether it involves a solute, solvent, or solution, there's some other assumptions you can make in a number of different word problems that can help you get started. First, if you're given molarity, it's often helpful to assume that there's one liter of solution present. If you multiply one liter by the molarity, this would give you the moles of solute present that you can use in later steps in the problem. A second suggestion is that if you're given molality as a concentration in the word problem, you could assume that there's one kilogram of solvent present. This would give you the moles of the solute that are present, which that you can then use to solve for other values in the problem. A third suggestion is that if you're given mass percent, you could assume that there's 100 grams of solution present. This would automatically give you the grams of the solute that you could use. Finally, if a word problem gives you the density of the solution, you should remember that this is a good conversion factor that allows you to convert between the liters of the solution and the mass in grams of the solution. Let's look at an example of converting one concentration unit into another concentration unit. In this problem, we're told that a particular glucose solution has a concentration of 6.56 mass percent. We're asked to calculate the concentration of this solution in molarity, and we're also given that the density of the solution is 1.03 grams per milliliter. The molar mass of glucose is given as 180.16 grams per mole. As we discussed with our suggestions in the previous two slides, we can convert the mass percent into 6.56 grams of glucose over 100 grams of solution. Since we're looking for molarity, we know that we need to get units of moles of glucose and liters of solution. You should recall that it's fairly easy to convert grams of glucose into moles of glucose using the molar mass for glucose. So we would take 6.56 grams of glucose multiplied by the conversion factor for the molar mass, one mole of glucose over 180.16 grams of glucose, and that gives us a value of 0.03641 moles of glucose. Now we have the moles of glucose we need to calculate molarity. How are we going to get the liters of the solution? If you look back at the mass percent that we wrote out, we saw we had grams of solution. From the previous slide, we saw that we could use the density of the solution to convert between the liters of the solution and the mass of the solution in grams. So let's go ahead and do that for this example. If we have 100 grams of solution multiplied by 1 milliliter of solution over 1.03 grams of solution, and then we use the conversion factor from liters to milliliters, we would find that we have 0.09709 liters of solution. Now we have both the moles of the glucose and the liters of the solution and we can divide those to get the molarity of the solution, and we get, when we round to the correct number of significant figures, 0 0.375 molar solution of glucose. After watching this video, 
you should be able to write out the units of a concentration, including whether the various units pertain to the solute, the solvent, or the solution. You should also be able to make certain assumptions based on the concentration value given in order to help you convert from one concentration unit to another.